Hey, welcome back to Global Environment. We're talking about ecological economics. And last segment, we built the neoclassical model. And we noticed an interesting thing. It didn't obey the second law of thermodynamics. It was really a perpetual motion machine, totally self-sustaining. Now, that's a problem, as you can imagine. So we're going to try to improve it. We're going to add some things in. So we'll look back at our original model here, our neoclassical model. And again, you can see we got households and firms here and them interacting. But again, this is a perpetual motion machine. Things go around and around, and we know that can't happen. So what we have to do is try to get it to obey the second law of thermodynamics. To do that, we have to add in waste heat. Okay? Now it obeys the second law of thermodynamics to some extent because we know that waste heat has to be there. Now, we've got this system. It's going around and around. We've got waste heat coming out of it. What's going to happen over time? It's going to stop. So what do we have to do? We have to put energy in. Now what kind of energy is that if we're talking about the uh, U.S. economy, for example, that would be fossil fuels like oil, coal, natural gas, could be nuclear, solar, uh, hydro, all kinds of things. So keep that in mind. Okay. Now the economy is not just made out of energy. We also have materials. Now energy can't be recycled, but materials can. Not all materials. So if all materials can't be recycled in this, what do we have to account for? Okay waste material or matter okay and what do we often call this stuff we call it pollution okay alright so that's important now we've got this cycle it's going around and around and around it's got matter leaking out of it what's gonna happen it actually sounds like my old Subaru what's gonna happen after a while it's gonna stop just like my old Subaru so what do we have to do we have to add matter in makes sense very logical so matter goes in what are we talking about we're talking about metals we're talking about fibers we're talking about plastics from petroleum all kinds of things stone so matter is important okay now this is starting to make more sense now here's a question for you where is this stuff coming from where are these resources coming from energy and matter does the economy make it no, of course not. This stuff comes from the environment. So what we have to do is draw kind of a circle around all this stuff, okay? And these are new boundaries, and these boundaries account for the environment. So I'll put a little abbreviation here. This is the environment. These things come from the environment. These wastes go back to the environment. Now let's, let's think about it. What else does the environment do for the economy? Okay. Hmm. Let's think about it. How, how about this? Did you take a hot shower this morning? Now if you did, did you have to run down to the ocean, scoop up a, bu you know, a bucket of salt water, run back to your house, heat it up, distill it to get the salt out to take your shower? No, you didn't have to do that. Because water is brought to you by the water cycle. And do you have to pay a water cycle bill? No, you don't pay a water cycle bill. It's a free service. The water cycle is a free service. Imagine if it didn't function properly. You'd have to pay for that. You might have to pump water from the ocean and distill it, but you don't have to. How about this? Does, uh, do any of you have a garden? Do you have to go out every spring with a little Q-tip and rub the flowers? No, you don't have to do that. Birds and bees and butterflies and wind do pollination for you for free. It's a free service. How about this? When you, when you leave your house, you have to put on a space helmet because you're afraid the, the, the ultraviolet rays are going to fry you to a crisp. No, because we have an ozone layer that protects us. Do you pay an ozone bill? No. These free services are very important. What we call them is environmental goods and services, we'll, we'll abbreviate, G and S. And the important thing 
is they're free and they support the economy. You don't have to worry about them. And, and, and that's important because if they didn't exist, we'd have to replicate their services. Now, just, just thinking about the idea of pollination and the waste in our model, when we looked at the waste in our model, some of these can be feeding back and destroying some of these freebies. So in the U.S. right now, we're having problems with bees disappearing. Pollination has to be paid for in some areas because you have to pay a business to bring you uh, bees for your orchard, for example. Um, some people pay water bills because we don't have free water purification in cities anymore. We've overwhelmed those goods and services. So if we look back at this model again, I would say this is the most simple model we can use it obeys the second law of thermodynamics and it includes the environment. Now in the next segment we're going to come back and we're going to show, really show you more clearly how the original model, the neoclassical model fails and how this ecological economic model that we just created is superior. So I'll see you next time in Global Environment.